All right, everybody, welcome to Market Pros, where every day we upload morning analysis, and every Saturday we interview your favorite YouTubers, top crypto experts, and market professionals. My guest today is Kyle. How are you doing today, Kyle? Welcome back. Yeah, pretty good. Thanks for having me back. Thanks. Yeah, pleasure's all mine. Um, so how long have you been trading, and uh, which markets? Oh man, um, I, I would I would say the first time I really got into trading was probably back in 2012, so about 10 years ago. Um, doing mainly uh, pink sheets, <clears throat> so penny stocks. Um, very momentous style trading, which probably has always been my tactic. I, I've always found myself doing momentum trading. Really doesn't matter what market. Um, but it wasn't until about uh 2018 2019 when i really got into options and that's when i really um started getting serious about trading and wasn't just looking for quick wins uh but trying to like sustain myself doing it but, yeah gotcha um so out of all the markets which is your favorite to trade uh definitely options uh like option indexes uh, big blue chips, so fang stocks as well, um, stuff like that. So yeah. What uh, yeah, options is something that I've recently started to learn. Um, I've been trading for five years, and I figured it's just time for me to kind of step up. And I mean, options is probably the most complicated uh type of trading. You know. Yeah, the uh, instruments, the instruments there can be a little uh daunting at first for sure yeah yeah so what strategies do you use when trading not not only in the options markets which i would like you to include but what other strategies do you use you know trading stocks even crypto you know yeah <clears throat> so um you know when it comes to trading purely technical trader um i i mean there are definitely some you know, when it comes to announcements or certain uh, reporting days, you know, they, those can clearly have uh, impact on your positions or your trading that day. Yeah. Um, but I always stuck to momentum trading. So, you know, high volume, um, breakouts, stuff like that, <clears throat> you know, trying to figure out which um, I think the entries were always the, the easier part for me. Um, but, you know, sticking with it. Um, you know, uh, when I first started with momentum trading, especially with options, it was very much a, you know, okay, it's to me, it was very easy when it comes to, when it came to technical, uh, indicators, when to get into a trade, um, and getting out, especially in the option world was different than it can be with the crypto or even just, you know, standard, uh, stock market style, you know, spot trading. But <clears throat> I think what helped me with success in options was the the ability to put together strategies that allowed me to bake in my exit. Um, I think that's pretty much um, was kind of like my saving grace. Uh, it definitely allowed me to get out of the way of the trade, right? I can set up a trade, you know, it could be like an iron condor or, you know, a one-sided trade, you know, selling or buying really options didn't really matter. Um, but being able to pick my stop loss, kind of my like a little bit of my exit, um, that definitely allowed me to get out of the way. And I think that's, you know, what allowed me to have more success in options than it did any type of spot trading, um, even crypto. So, but yeah. Yeah. Following the plan is one of the hardest things to do. Um, you know, that greed will take over, you know, the fear, you know, those emotions, which is a trader's worst enemy is mm -hmm. himself or herself. Um, so yeah, following the plan, you know, takes your, like you said, takes yourself out of it. It takes those emotions out of the trades. One of the most important rules that I have, uh, you know, everybody has their own trading rules, you know, and that's, that's kind of the next question I would like to ask you is what are some of your rules when it comes to trading? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> you know, it, it, I think a lot of my rules, uh, ultimately came down to how do I eliminate decision making during a trade? Um, cause that's ultimately what I, I don't want to do that. Right. I mean, the only decision when it comes to, you know, 
a trade, like during the trade, that you should be asking yourself is, am I at a stop loss or am I at an exit, right? And that's that's it. You know, can you, um, you know, there's definitely more advanced techniques. Um, you know, let's say you have uh, intermediate steps to move your stop loss. Um, that was a huge one, definitely allowing me to, um, like, protect myself. You know, if you get to a certain you know, range above your initial entry, you know, ultimately you want to lock in your profits. Don't, you know, don't leave things on the table. You know, if, if you get a random spike down, but you still made, you know, 2%, you know what, that's better than losing, you know, 5%. So, you know, sometimes trades can, you know, cut short and continue on later. <clears throat> uh, definitely other uh, strategies I did to help with that, which essentially, you know, it, uh, I would always make two trades. Um, one had a definite, um, you know, they, they all had milestones where I would move my stop loss. Um, but one of them would lag a little bit. Um, so that way I can potentially protect some of my profits, but ha still kind of hedge against um, swings a little bit. Like, you know, especially in 2019 towards the end, uh, maybe 2020, this might actually have been more of a 2020 where the market started really getting volatile, um, which that's really what hurt my uh, strategy was uh, being able to handle that volatility. Um, you know, trading Microsoft and Apple in 2019, those were really easy momentum trades, in my opinion. Uh, I think once you got to 2020 and the pandemic really started hitting, that's when a lot of my own rules had to start changing a bit um, because ultimately you have to accommodate the market. You know, the market's not going to accommodate my strategy. Um, it's my job to make sure that my strategy is resilient against change. Um, but yeah, I mean, one of the basic rules was how can I eliminate emotions and decision making, right? I don't want to get in the way. Um, and really, whatever I found in my own experience that helped me do that, that was just something else that made it to the, you know, the checklist, right? Because I, I think every trader is going to find their own weaknesses and their own strengths. So. Oh, yeah. You know what your what your rules are should be protecting you against your weakness, right? You know, leverage your strengths, but protect you from your weakness. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I have uh, I probably have like two hundred rules that I've wrote down, like just personal lessons, you know, mistakes, you know. So looking at the other side of those mistakes, like how could I improve? How could I yeah. keep myself from making those same mistakes? And I actually review that list every week. You know, I have two days of the week that I focus on trading education. Even though I've been trading for five years, it's still very important that you keep learning. And you go over your mistakes. You go over your lessons. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So, so what other advice would you give brand new traders? Like, I mean, just, yeah, yeah just so, out of the box. Yeah, one thing kind of touches on what you were just uh, talking about there, right? Like, you've written down rules, um, you know, a little bit what I said, you know, when it comes to experience, like, you kind of find things uh, that you're doing that you don't like, that you want to find a way to protect yourself from. Um, and the best way to do both those things is journal, you know? I know I'm going to sound kind of like a broken record here, but, you know, journaling is one of the best tools that any trader uh, can leverage, right? Is always learning from your experience, right? So when you are learning options, you know, you're going to have hiccups. Um, it might even just be like the tools you're using, right? Like make sure, you know, when using this tool to check this box or, you know, make sure you don't forget your stop loss, um, things like that. Um, and not to mention, it helps you keep record of how the market's behaving, right? Like you're going to, if you, especially reviewing your journal. I mean, it's one thing to write it down. Please, for the love of God, review, review what you are writing down. And it's pointless. Because, exactly. You know, it's one thing to get your thoughts down. But if you don't, you know, keep your thoughts not just fresh with what's going on, but, you know, keep it in context of what's been happening. You know, you might find trends, you know, where the market's shifting, you know, certain things aren't like maybe you need to th move thresholds or something, you know, to accommodate that uh, volatility in the market. Um, it's things like that, you know, so always keeping your journal going, reviewing your journal. Um, it definitely helps a ton. It definitely is more of the uh, psychological side, I think, than just, you know, more of the technical stuff. Um, the other thing is, you know, I think one of the biggest things with trading, you know, it's very enticing. It's like, you mean I can just 
do my own thing and spend my, you know, use my own time to make money. And it's like, that's great. That's a huge selling point. Um, but I think one thing is people don't respect the amount of time it takes to get good. Right. Um, and they think it's just real quick. It's like, Oh man, it's going up. Just buy, you know, and stuff like that. It's like, man, it's just not that simple. Right. Um, so I think, you know, taking time, you know, learning the craft, learning the, the skills needed, uh, is very important. And one of the best ways to do that is paper trading. And I think between journaling and paper trading, um, and, and just to be clear, I don't think paper trading is a beginner person thing at all, right? You, even after five years, if you're going to start a new market, maybe a new strategy, um, you know, new tools, it's, it's important to test them out, right? Back like, test. like, I mean, I'm a software developer. We don't just throw, you know, code into production and hope it works. Just like you shouldn't be throwing your money at something you haven't tested and hope it works. I mean, it's not going to work. You know, you're going to you're gonna hit bumps. You're going to lose money. So the point is learn your strategy. You know, it, it should be very mechanical. I mean, I mean, I guess unless you're a function, uh, fundamentals trader, which, you know, I would argue that's maybe not no. um, not really the, the place for this. but Not now, at least. Yeah, exactly. So I think, uh, you know, journaling and paper trading, you know, it, get good before you worry about making money. Cause I promise you, you'll be out of the game a lot faster if you don't. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Back testing oh. a new strategy is very important. Uh, you know, yep. paper trading will give you the opportunity to back test your strategy, see your win rate, you know, uh, when you have a developed strategy, you know exactly how much money you will make over a period of time because yeah. you know how many wins and how many losses about, you know, that you're going to have. You know, you can see if you have a six or seven hit rate, you know, and that'd be yep. that's a really good strategy. I mean, you can be wrong half the time. And the other side of that coin is risk management. Your risk management I'm has sorry. to be on point or you will lose it all. You know, like you could win one big trade and you could lose, I mean, you could win 10 trades, lose it all on one trade if your risk management isn't on point. And back to the, oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, for sure. Back to the journaling, um, the trader's journal is one of the most important things. Like you, like you said, uh, it's the only way to really see what worked and what didn't, you know, and like, I have a very detailed journal to where I even I even put down how I felt during the trade, like if I was tired, anxious, happy, you know, uh, whatever, you know, irritable mm -hmm. to where, to where I can see where my peak performance, you know, was. And, uh, yeah, journaling is very important, you know, and having that checklist, you know, if you have that checklist, you don't miss nothing. You know what I mean? Like make sure you review, you know, your checklist. Make sure you uh, review your journal constantly. That's one of the things that I do on my two trading days is, uh, or my two trading education days is I go back through my journal. I go back through my rules, you know, and I mean, I trade, you know, as the trades come, but, uh, you know, I re review my journal every week and then to the paper trading, I do think it's very important to start there, but, uh, also know that there is no psychology in paper trading. Um, yeah. I mean, you know what I mean? Like, like there is like, you know, you'll be happy when you win and you know, whatever, but until you have skin in the game, most of the psychology oh, yeah. isn't even in there. You know what I mean? Cause you can be, I, Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. I, my, my point is you, you never, so like your point with back testing, right. And then to me, there's three stages. <clears throat> Um, well, maybe four, if you include having a hypothesis. So one, you have to have an idea of what, you know, what edge you think you can get on the market, right? The second one is to backtest that idea, right? With historical data. Yeah. When your historical performance is, uh, meeting your criteria of whatever that is to me, the next stage is not to go live with money, but it is to put it into the live market and to use paper trading. Right. Because that paper trading allows you, because again, we want to go back to being robots as much as possible, yeah, right? exactly. So getting yourself in there, making sure that it is working live uh, is definitely, you know, because ultimately it's one thing to say, you know, it works in the past, but, you know, market conditions definitely change, you know, 
So you need to make sure that, again, you can change with them. So if you can pass those three tests, right, of back testing, or I guess, whatever, two tests, back testing, and then live performance of paper trading, then that, to me, it's that's when I would go forward with, you know, putting it in my live account, basically. So, and there's one thing I wanted to touch on. You said something really, uh, really important, and it's the fact that you're recording how you feel. Um, I think that's really good, mainly because with some trading groups that I've been in, you you could see some days where, you know, uh, and I'm talking about this is just a matter of like an hour or two. You know, the market's open. Uh, you know, a few guys make some really good trades. They're up, you know, quite a bit on the day. And the next thing you know is they're just losing it all. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've seen people just give back their profits. Yeah. And I think one thing um, to, you know, pay attention to is how you're feeling, you know. Not saying those people were in bad moods. They might have been in great moods, and they got even yeah. better moods because of the, uh, you know, the trades they're making. Maybe too uh, great of a mood exactly. after those yeah. wins. So having uh, your own thresholds of w knowing when you should be even trading, right? Like you, there might there might you might show up the day, and you're just in a bad mindset. And the, one of the best things you could do to protect your account is just don't trade that day. Exactly. You know, just get out of the market. There's nothing wrong with taking it like taking a day you know you don't have to step away from trading altogether maybe you want to test some strategies or something like that but you know sometimes the best way to protect your account is to just stay away from your like from trading yeah so oh yeah 100 yeah. so we're almost out of time uh do you have any closing thoughts um i mean uh, well, especially when it comes to new uh traders you know it is a long road but it is a very fruitful road, I think. Um, there's plenty of things you'll learn about yourself. Uh, but, you know, don't think it's a quick win, a quick way to make money. Um, it definitely can lead to financial freedom, but you're going to work for it. I promise you that. All right. Uh, Kyle, I want to thank you for coming back on the channel. It was very good. I, I definitely enjoyed, definitely enjoyed this. Absolutely. Um, yeah, it was my pleasure. So everybody, if you like the content, please like and subscribe. Uh, remember that every day we upload morning analysis on the markets and every Saturday we interview the uh, top crypto professionals, uh, market experts, and your favorite YouTubers. So in, with saying that, everyone have a great day and I will see you in the next one.